Hello, hello. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I'm Teacher Oakley. For the next hour, uh, we are going to be doing a little brainstorming, maybe a little sentence construction, uh, but primarily, uh, we're going to be, I hope, learning some new vocabulary. Or, really, to put it another way, the object of the class is to use vocabulary, which I'm sure many of you know. Uh, we're going to focus on animals, the names of it, common animals, uh, which you know as nouns, as a picture a dog, you all know what a dog is, what a dog looks like. But we're going to take these normal everyday nouns and talk about the different forms, possibly a verb form, possibly adjective form, possibly a slang form, possibly even look at idiomatic forms or uh, even uh, phrasal verb forms of these simple nouns. Uh, hopefully, by doing that, um, you can be introduced uh, to new meanings of some regular old words you thought of as uh, one thing, but maybe you didn't realize, metaphorically or abstractly, these very concrete nouns, the words, the names of animals, uh, actually have very different uses in English. And I'm going to need your help to do this because guess what? My material is basically a blank page and you guys are going to help me fill the page. All right. That's the game plan. Uh, all right. Let me uh, welcome students to the class. Hello, Anna again. Hello, Oakley. It's really nice to see you again. My pleasure, really. Nice to, nice to have you here. And uh, also, it's always a pleasure to see Victor. Hello, Victor. Hello. Nice yeah. to see you again. Likewise. Uh, okay, now, <laughs> our third contestant. Um, I'm sorry, but I do not read Chinese characters. I, I, I think those are Chinese characters. Could you please tell me your name? Oh, uh, hi. I'm Ami. Ami. Hi, yeah. Ami. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Oakley. Nice to uh, meet you. Okay. Thank you. Where are you from, uh, Ami? Uh, I'm from Japan. Japan. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you, and thanks for joining the class. Okay. Uh, as I threatened you, <laughs> basically, I'm going to share a document here, but it's pretty much... A blank page. Uh, here we go. I, it's one word. Animals. Okay. You guys, our first step in the class, you guys are going to brainstorm. Now, please, I want you to just, I'm just going to take turns going around the class a few times so we have enough material. And uh, I want you to just give me the name of a, a, an animal, a regular, please, a regular everyday animal. This part of the class is not the part to get creative, okay? I don't want to hear about spiny urchins or aardvarks or orangutans. Please try to give me just kind of everyday common animals, all right? Because uh, that's going to be more useful for the rest of the class. We're not going to be able to do much with uh, spiny anteaters. <laughs> not a lot of metaphorical metaphorical uh, uh, meanings for spiny anteaters. Uh, okay, so uh, let's let's begin. Anna, give me an animal, any animal, but some common animal, please. A dog. All right, well, that's straight to the point. Uh, okay, turn off my underline. A dog, uh, okay. Terrific. Victor, what do you got? Okay, I got... A cat. Okay. Well, that'll work. Uh, all right, Ami. Yep. Uh, a horse. A horse. Be careful of your your R's there. Horse. 
Okay. Anna? We're going to do a, a couple pig. rounds here. A pig. Oh, excellent. Okay. A pig. Terrific. Victor? Mm, a mouse. Mouse. Okay. Terrific. Mommy. A uh, monkey. Monkey. Okay. Terrific. We got to do at least one more round here. <laughs> the Muppet Show. Yeah. Great. Anna? Uh, frog. Frog. Okay. Great. Uh, you're thinking Muppet Show. All right. Anna's thinking Muppet Show. I was thinking maybe Chinese Zodiac. Or I don't know. Whatever. Whatever helps you think of animals. Victor? A dove. A uh, what? Dove. Dove? Uh, yes. That's interesting. Maybe yes. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, all right. Uh, Ami? Yep. Uh, what? Deer? Deer. Are you calling me deer? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> joke, joke. Just joking. All right. Never mind. Uh, okay. I think that is enough to get us started. Uh, all right. We, we may think about some more uh, later. All right. Now, uh, okay. Uh, dog. Let's start simply. We're going to go one word by first. We're going to deal with dog. Is there a verb? Uh, is there a verb form of dog, Anna? Well, a verb. Well, I believe there should be. There should be. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Can you ask me about the noun? <laughs> the noun? Well, okay. We know what the noun is, right? Well, it uh, contains uh, another word, like a dog and another, and it, it is a noun. Oh, you okay. Uh, all right. A noun. What are you talking about? Underdog. Okay. All right. Underdog. Whoops. Uh, under God. <laughs> underdog. All right. Wait, what's an underdog? It's a loser. Uh, it's a loser. No, it isn't. Really? Not necessarily. No. Hmm. Uh, okay. Actually, this is an interesting word. All right. We're, we're, our point here is to learn vocabulary, and everybody messes this up. So I'm glad you actually made me go back and do this. Uh, okay, because this is a word that um, often gets confused. And, and underdog is not a loser. It because the game hasn't happened yet, or the competition. Maybe you can have an underdog in the office vying for the vice president position. You can have an underdog, of course, normally we think about it in sports, but any kind of competition. You have an underdog. What's the opposite of underdog? Overdog. <laughs> no. We, there's no such word as overdog. The opposite of an underdog is a favorite. Okay? So... An underdog is not a loser because the competition hasn't been decided. The game has not happened yet. You can only have an underdog and a favorite before the competition actually occurs. So before the competition, the underdog is the one who everybody thinks is going to lose. So they're not a loser yet. Sometimes the underdog wins. I like to bet on the underdog because the odds are better and you make more money. Uh, okay, the favorite is the one that everybody thinks is going to win. Uh, okay, everybody thought Serena Williams was going to win the U.S. Open, so the odds were ridiculously in her favor. If you bet $10, you only would win $1 if you won because she was the favorite. On the other hand... <laughs> The girl that she played, uh, that beat her, I forgot her name now, sorry, my apologies to her and to any fans, 
but she was the underdog. So if you bet on the underdog, you bet ten dollars, you'd make a hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's the difference: underdog and overdog. There really there isn't. There was a word in your dictionary: overdog. Yeah, it was like an opposite to underdog, you know. Really? <laughs> Thanks God that you told I, me. I could be wrong. I just never have... I, I, I'm actually looking it up myself, okay? I guess it is a word. Well, All you right. can't be wrong. You're a native speaker. <laughs> no, I can be wrong because this is a word that no one ever uses. So I, I do uh, want to be the first to <laughs> use it. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay, I, native speakers would talk about the underdog and the favorite. I have never heard anybody yeah. use the word right. overdog. It's really good to know that. Yeah. It, well, yeah, it, it is. Okay. Well, Victor, can dog be used as a verb? Okay. <clears throat> as a verb. Dogger, yeah. but it doesn't make sense for me. To dog. To dog. Well, actually it can. Uh, to dog somebody. Um, it has to be somebody. The object noun has to be somebody. Any idea? What, what do you think this means? Think about a dog. <laughs> All right. <laughs> think about a dog. If you're dogging somebody. Uh, a very... Intense people. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not. Not an adjective. To dog somebody. For example, Bobby. Like well, let me Hello, explain. Yes. Let me give you an example. Bobby has been in love with Mary all through high school. Every day he would dog her around the school. Ah. Do you get the idea, Victor? I think Never. a very persistent uh, you, to 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 find any uh, to find anything or to find somebody. Well, well, the idea, the idea is to follow spot. someone around like a dog, basically, like a puppy dog. Sad okay. eyes. Okay, it's very common to use in this I, this idea of somebody who's like crazy, uh, infatuated in love with someone. But I can also use it like this. Um, oh, Bill. Sorry, also I sometimes I read the expression "crazy dog." Crazy dog. Yes. Okay, I don't really know that. We'll, we'll get to slang in a second. I want to give you one more example of dog so you understand it. Bill has been trying to um, give me a, a business proposal to start a new product. Uh, I'm his manager. So Bill has been dogging me all around the office for the last week. He, he follows me around. Do you have a few minutes, sir? Can I talk to you for a little while? Uh, I've added a little more to my proposal. So somebody who keeps following you around, following you around, is dogging you. All right. Okay, uh, Victor, you want to talk about slang? Yes, is crazy dog. Crazy dog. Okay. Yes. When, I, when, again, I don't know everything. I don't know this. Yeah, is, when people is very happy. Oh, people do stupid things. You can say it's a crazy dog. Really? Okay. Yes. Again, see this exercise that we're doing here. I, I'm I'm learning words just as much as you are. Uh, okay. Um, I don't. I've never heard this before, frankly. And I'm not finding it either. <laughs> uh, when I I do a quick, you know, a quick search. Crazy dog meaning. Well, hang on. Maybe. Oh, Urban Dictionary. Okay. Urban Dictionary. Uh, a fool. Okay. <laughs> a fool, yes. Yeah. Foolish person. Okay. All right. Now, I've definitely heard of a um, uh, crazy dog. Okay. Uh, all right. That, that That's one I never heard of. Um, mad dog is fairly common. 
All right. Uh, okay, Matt Dog, somebody who's actually really crazy, uh, dangerously crazy. Well, like a mad dog, I suppose, or even just dog. Um, somebody who's a dog, uh, okay, is it's derogatory. <laughs> um, it can mean actually one of two things. It can mean a very ugly person. What a dog. Okay, as slang. Just so you know. Or a dog can be somebody who's basically lazy is another idea. So dog has a lot of slang connotations. All of these sort of abstract meanings of dog really have something or another to do with the personality of the actual dog. Um, I'll give you one that's way out there. Um, okay, here's a very strange, I want to give you an idiom now. Ami, yep. I'm just, I'm going to write the idiom, what on earth, what does this mean idiomatically? Whoops, 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 sorry. My dogs are barking. My dogs are barking, Amy. Ami, sorry. Oh, my, my dogs are barking. What does uh, that mean? Uh, the dog is... Um, idiom. Idiom. Yeah. You're never going to guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seriously doubt this is unfair. Highly unfair. <laughs> it would be impossible to figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> from the actual words. If you don't already know the idiom. Uh, I'll come back to you and give you another chance, Ami. I don't want to torture you. Anna or Victor, do you know this idiom? My dogs are barking. I think you use this idiom when you are angry. No. You, you, you're never going to get it. No. My feet hurt. <laughs> oh, my dogs are barking. i got to put my feet up for a little while. Uh, yeah. Crazy, huh? Crazy idiom there. Uh, okay, you, you, I know you, that was a ridiculous example. Uh, okay. This is a fun idiom that you can use. Strangely enough, believe it or not, I, I don't know if the Brits ever use this or not, but the Americans, any American would know this immediately. It's actually fairly common. You come home from work, oh, I'm so tired, I work so hard, my dogs are barking. Okay. All right, so th there we go. W one animal down. You, you can see how just a simple animal. We've we've got um, compound nouns that can be made from that word. We've got verbs. We've got slang. We've got idioms, metaphorical meanings all over the place. Uh, okay, Ami. Yep. Okay, can you think of a a noun, a compound noun that you uses too. cat? Go to cats now. Can you think of a, a word that's two words with the word cat? Cat? Yeah. Uh, you ever, I mean, you ever, you ever get tired in the middle of the day and you lie down <laughs> to sleep no. for a short, short time? No? You don't? I'm what not do you? Lucky you. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Let me let me ask your classmates. I know. You know, Anna. Yeah, I know. What is it? Cat nap. That's right. Whoops. You take a little cat nap. Okay. Much like a cat. Cats love to sleep. I think we all know that. So if you take a cat nap, it's a short little rest, a short little nap. Yeah. You can take a cat nap. All right. Um, again, kind of related to the idea of the noun of cats, personality of cats. Um, okay. A verb. Is there a verb? I don't know. But I do know there's an adjective. If you can think of a verb, go ahead. Uh, Anna, can you think of an adjective form of cat? Mm, not really. And, Maybe get like. Yeah, I knew you were gonna. I totally knew you were gonna say that. Oh, okay. Well, yes. Now look. All right. 
<laughs> sure, cat-like. Um, you know what? You can say dog-like, cat-like, horse-like, pig-like, mouse-like, monkey-like, frog-like, dove-like, deer-like. You can basically add the word like <laughs> to pretty much any animal on the planet, starfish-like, and uh, create create a, uh, an adjective. But yes, cat-like is a fairly common one, Un unlike starfish-like. I've never actually heard that used. But it, it's a, it, this is an easy way to create an adjective. In English, you can make your own words up. Here's one way you can do it, add like to an animal. Another way is hyphenate two words, and you can create your own adjective anytime you want to. But, uh, okay, there's another one. Caddy. Do you know what caddy is, Anna? No, common. not really. This is very common. Victor, any idea what caddy means? <clears throat> no, really not. Really, I don't know. Okay, uh, Ami. Ami, do you know? Generally, uh, generally speaking, only women. This uh, adjective is only for women. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Is it mean woman? Mean, especially mean to other women. So we can't even use this for men. the uh, the The definition is a woman who's very mean to other women and puts down other women to make yourself feel better or, you know, a caddy remark. We, we use this word co-located with caddy. She's a caddy woman. Um, or, oh, that's a caddy remark saying something like, oh, uh, did, uh, did you just do your hair yourself? When the woman obviously just went to the hairdresser and spent $100. Oh, I see you do your nails yourself. How lovely. When obviously she's just spent a fortune getting her nails done. Okay, that's a very catty thing to say. Uh, okay, get the idea. Well, yeah. Okay, Anna. <laughs> yes. Yes to what you just said. It is a more polite version of bitchy. Yeah. 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 But, you know, to tell you the truth, Anna, a man can be bitchy. I can be bitchy when I wake up in the morning for my coffee, to be perfectly honest with you. But I cannot be catty. It's just not possible because this is just for women-to-women -women relationship kind of thing. Uh, okay. Um, I'll give you, oh, there is a verb I can think of. Uh, can anybody think of a verb? Uh, I'm thinking of actually a phrasal verb that uses cat. Okay. Victor, do you have any idea what it means to cat around? Cat around? Okay. I think it's staying aside and like, uh -huh. like a cat is watching uh -huh. for something or waiting for, for somebody. That's very good. Yes, you're this close. You're so close. If you're catting around, you're probably a male catting around. You're out of the house. You stay out all night looking for women. Okay. Ah, yeah. yeah it's the yeah. same for Tomcat. Like Tomcat. Tom yes. yes. That's right. Um, and sometimes, actually, okay, well, you're absolutely right. Sometimes, actually... Uh, we actually use Tomcat around. You're absolutely correct. Oh, he's he's been out Tomcatting around every night this week. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Uh, how about... Uh, what idioms? Open to the class. Anybody? Can anybody think of an idiom that uses uh, mm -hmm. cat or refers to cat? Cats. A fat cat. Okay. All right. Is someone that has a lot of money? Whoops. Sorry. A fat yes, it cat. Is. Yes, it is. Okay. Sorry. Put that back up there. Yes, it is. Uh, indeed, it is. 
Fat cat, kind of slang, kind of an idiom. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give you that. It's kind of an, an idiom. All right. A fat cat. That's right. Very good. Somebody with a lot of money. A fat wallet. Uh, okay. Okay. Ami, what does it mean if I say, my goodness, he's got nine lives. Or he, or really, he must have nine lives. Got, must have. What, what do you think that means? Uh, well, mm, uh, I guess he is very lucky. Yes, he's very lucky. Um, that's right. Do you know how this refers to cats? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay. Some people say cats have nine lives, right? Mm -hmm. There's an old expression or proverb that cats have nine lives. So when we say somebody must have nine lives, yes, that's the idea. They're very, very lucky. Or they've gotten away with something that I don't know. Maybe they should have been. They should have died or something from mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's go to the ponies. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, Ami, can you yeah. think of uh, any other form, a verb, a, a noun with a compound noun, or a verb or an adjective that uses horse? Horse? Yeah. Um, let me see. You use horse as a verb? A uh, horse around. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Again, being used. As Absolutely. What does it mean, Ami? Can you use it in a sentence? In a sentence. Um. Um. I. I horsed around. At the party last night. Okay. Well, you want to use past tense. I horsed around at the party last night. But you did. Okay. Well, all right. Um, all right. So if Ami tells me that, I assume that she was kind of uh, physically a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping on the bed or, or dancing on the table or something crazy like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. That, all right. Very good. You shouldn't horse. Don't horse around. Parents <laughs> often tell their children, D "Stop horsing around. <laughs> okay. You're going to put an eye out. You'll break your arm. Stop horsing around." Okay. <laughs> Let me uh, welcome Nader to the class. Hello, Nader. How are you? Hello, hello. Hi again. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Nader, go ahead and. Type them up. If you can, you think of any other, um, any uh, besides the noun form? Can you think of a compound noun or any other forms of uh, of horse, like an adjective or or anything like that? Uh, something related to jokes, practical jokes. Well, you can. Make a <laughs> well, okay. I kind of think of something, but um, I kind of think I shouldn't say it. Uh, <laughs> you can make a horse's butt out of somebody. Uh, it's possible. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, there is, okay, 
again, well, much like much like the the last example, cat, caddy. Guess what? There's also horse and horsey. Uh, all right. Who in class can tell me a um, a famous American politician who's kind of horsey? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I cracked myself up. Sorry. Uh, all right. Um, sorry, horsey is a good or a bad expression? It's bad. It means horse. Bad? It's it's very much like horse-like. So uh, it's usually to talk about appearance. Okay. 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 I, I was thinking of our esteemed. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking of John Kerry, <laughs> or Secretary of American Secretary of State. There, John Kerry is kind of horsey. Um, okay, he's kind of horse-faced. All right. Well, there's another one. Again, obviously derogatory. He's a little horse-faced. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Sad but true. All right. Um, Okay. Uh, how about uh, idioms? Anna, can you think of any idioms with horses? Mm, I can think of one straight from the horse's mouth. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Uh, good example. Okay, and what does that mean? Uh, how could you use that? Maybe use it in a sentence for me. Well, I've heard this latest news straight from the horse's mouth. Okay. And I would assume hearing that from Anna, uh, that she heard it directly from the source. Um, if, if you don't hear it from the horse's mouth, then you might hear it second hand or even third hand. It, okay. Straight from the horse's mouth, you get information directly from the source, not from a third party, or get the information secondhand. Uh, okay. Horse, oh, I, I just thought of a noun as well. Okay, very much related to horse around. Um, okay, horseplay. I think it's a two-word compound noun. Horseplay, so if you horse around, then you're engaging in some horseplay. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's talk about pigs. Can I? Yeah. Sure. Can I share with you my personal embarrassment about? Um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you know, okay. there is an expression to be around peg in a square hole. <laughs> so you got the <laughs> idea, right? Okay, well the, <laughs> wait a minute, the expression, wait a minute here, the expression is a round peg, and I peg. thought it was a pig. <laughs> well, that's, that is most certainly an interesting picture that you paint. Okay, a round peg in a square hole, somebody who just doesn't fit. So, okay, you thought it was a round pig. <laughs> yeah. That's very funny. Um, okay. All right, now actually that's in interesting. Our, sub our topic, our title of our class is Animals and Metaphor. And uh, basically what Anna has confessed to us, she has confessed for. Now, pigs are used in other metaphors or other idioms. When you combine two different idioms and you have half of one idiom and half of another idiom and you combine them, that's called a mixed metaphor. Always always good for a laugh, <laughs> actually. <laughs> you know what, Anna? You should have said a round pig in a square pen. That would be better. <laughs> oh, so it's uh, there is. No, I just made that up. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but I like it though. But it it makes sense. It's very it's very funny. It's very witty actually. In a square what? 
uh, pen because because um, yeah. pigs live in a pen. A pig pen uh -huh. is uh -huh. where they live. In fact, we can look at uh, uh, our first metaphor as being a noun, a compound noun. Well, there we go. A pig pen. Your room is a pig pen. This would be very common. My mother used to say that to me all the time. Uh, okay. We went into the bar, but we left after two minutes. The place was a pig pen to emphasize that a place is disgusting and dirty. All right. Well, there you go. Right off the bat. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, Victor, what if I call somebody a pig? Slang. A pig is piggyback when you carry. Oh, that's another. One in your show. Okay. Piggyback. Okay, well, that's a noun or a verb, actually. To piggyback somebody, or I carried him piggyback. Uh, okay. Okay, that's that's a good one. Uh, all right, you carry a child piggyback when they're on your on their back and you have you're holding their legs, and they're kind of holding you around the neck there. Yeah, okay. Although I don't really know why, Victor. Victor. Okay, here's something weird I have to share culturally. That's crazy, Victor. In the United States, frequently, this is actually a, a normal activity in the United States, just to show you how sick we are. Um, we have a greased pig contest. <laughs> Do you know what that is? No, really. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, they, they literally grease a pig. They put oil on a pig. <laughs> and uh, then they have a contest, and the contest is to try to catch the pig. <laughs> ah, okay. I got it. And usually this is conducted in a big muddy pen, uh, so everyone gets extremely filthy, and it's very, they're very, very difficult to catch as well. Ah, pig pen, yes, or pig sty. I, either one of these, the interchangeable. Yes, pig sty. Pig pen, meaning the same thing. Very good, Anna. Okay. Yeah, grease pig. So, we they sometimes oh he's faster than a greased pig. Is <laughs> is a comparative uh, statement that you can use. Well, basically a, a common analogy we use: faster than a greased pig. Not that a greased pig is that fast, but they really are hard to catch. Uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, but what if you just call somebody a pig? What what am I saying, uh, Ami? Yes. If I say he's such a pig, what do I mean? <clears throat> um, uh, I guess it means someone who is fat. It can mean he's fat, mm -hmm. or it can mean that he's uh, a slob, or both. Okay? Mm -hmm. Can mean he's fat, can mean he's a slob. He's a pig. What else can it mean? Does anybody know? It can mean it, that I'm he's polite very polite and rude. Could mean rude. See, there's a lot of things this could mean. Uh, rude. Uh, yes, selfish. I would throw that in there. You say a mean person, but to be more direct. Uh, selfish. Slang, there's one more meaning. And look at all the other ones we have here. Fat, slob, rude, selfish. <laughs> Very common in the United States, and I, I'm, I'm glad there's no, I hope there's no Americans watching, but it is true. I'm nothing but the truth here. Uh, okay. I think this expression is only related to a uh, man. Well, yes, it, can be pig, it, could be, it could be related to a, a woman as well. You could call a woman a pig. It's, it's okay. A, a, a policeman. A police officer, okay. man or woman, is very common in the United States. So as you can see, obviously the police officers in the United States do not like this because you see the other 
kind of connotations, fat, slob, rude, selfish. Yeah, okay. I think it's quite clear it's derogatory. Uh, okay. Nader has got a couple of idioms over here. All right. What do you mean when you say in a pig's eye? In a pig's eye? Why do you say that? What is the idea here? Whoa. In, in my country, in uh, a pig's eye, meaning that you you can eat anything, or you can, for you, every woman is beautiful. You said you <laughs> a pig's eye. Really? Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Oh, I Do like you have that. any problem with the food or the wo uh, <laughs> women? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. That's very funny. Uh, I get a kick out of that. All right. In, all right. In English, it's basically an, an expletive, something you shout out when uh, to show disbelief. Okay. Oh. I'm a millionaire. In a pig's eye, you're a millionaire. B.S. No way. Uh, right. In a pig's eye. Not that far off from uh, when pigs fly or when pigs might fly. Right. Very good. Another good one. When pigs fly. Oh, yeah. That'll happen. When pigs fly. Sure. Okay. Great. Um. When you're highly, highly, the pig's eye I means you're incredulous. When pigs fly, you say that when, when you're excre extremely skeptical about an outcome or something that's going to happen. All right. So you don't believe it'll ever happen. When hell freezes over is another way to say when pigs fly, when hell freezes over. Uh, okay. In my language, it would be when the lobster whistles on the hill. <laughs> that was awesome. When the lobsters whistle on the hill. When a lobster whistles on the hill. Okay. That's terrific. Thanks for sharing that one. I have to remember that. That's a good one, man. Uh, I really enjoy that. Okay. Uh, all right, Ami, uh, you're the only one who doesn't have one about a pig. You, you got any about a pig? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's okay. We can move on. All right. Mouse. All right. Great. Ami, can you think of an adjective for mouse? Adjective. Yeah. Um. Usually to describe a person. Person. And look at a commonality we have here. Okay. Well, horse, horsey, cat, caddy. Uh, mousey. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my clue. Okay. Mousy. Yeah. What do you think that means, Ami, if I say, oh, she's so mousy? Um, She's a mousy girl. Like, um, mouse-like face. <laughs> well, actually, it can be. You're, you are correct. Actually, it can be used two ways. Physically, to say someone resembles a mouse. But that's right. Or, um... Okay, Anna's helping you out here. Too quiet. Somebody who's very, very quiet uh, and soft-spoken. When they do speak, they speak very quietly. Too quietly to hear, almost. Uh, okay, that's, that's also mousy. Uh, all right, very good. Um, okay, I think you guys get the idea. Uh, we can be looking at sort of metaphorical or abstract related meanings in compound nouns and verbs and adjectives, slang and idioms. Okay, now I'm going to open it up. You do whatever you want. Get a verb, a compound noun, uh, uh, an idiom, a slang, 
Um, what do you think? Anna, can you think of any other... Sure, to play cat and mouse. Oh, cat. Okay. Are you playing cat and mouse with me? Uh, okay. Now this... Now here's an idiom where it's it should be pretty clear thinking about, you know, cat and mouse. The idea, okay. The idea being to to toy with somebody. Uh, cats love to play with mice before they kill them. Uh, right? Um, it's a cat and mouse game. She's playing a cat and mouse game. Yeah, there, there are different versions of this idiom. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, rat. I, can, I smell a rat or a rat has a lot of... Rat has, of course, connotations about people, of course. Um, yeah, that, that's a totally different one, but uh, yeah, uh, rat has a lot of different things. But but as far as the metaphorical kind of meanings or analogies, English treats mouse and rat totally different. Rat is all, all negative, basically. Mouse is more like thought of in a general way as quiet and a victim. Really, whereas rat okay, is sorry, more. I can say uh, quite as a mouse. Yeah, you definitely could say that. Uh, okay, now this is an idiomatic simile, as adjective as something, as quiet as a mouse, and common ones that we use over and over again. Again, they're called similes. Uh, it's a form of analogy. You know, you're comparing something to something else to describe it. Right. And it's idiomatic because it's so common. Yeah, that's a very common one. Ah, okay, very good. Give me that one. Where'd that one come from? All right, when the cat's away, the mouse will play. Another interesting idiom. Okay. Uh, what's the meaning there? What do you think? Victor, do you know? When the cat's away. Yes, yes. Uh, it's when the, the, the person that has the control of that situation is not in the side. People uh, take yeah. the opportunity and do anything. Do, okay. Do anything. They do, <laughs> they do whatever they want to. Uh, oh, thank you. Okay, or they do anything they want. You could say it that way. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. The authority is a way often used for a boss and the work situation. But it could be, you know, could be mom's away. Could be <laughs> mom's away. She's got eight children, and okay, the cat's away. Mom and dad are away. Could be the family. Absolutely. All right. Uh, very good. Okay. Monkey. Monkey. <laughs> Sorry. Can't help myself. Monkey. Uh, all right. Uh, Ami, you got one for monkey? Uh, monkey around. Monkey around. Very good. Notice how many of these, uh, these, um, phrasal verb sort of, uh, Metaphorical phrasal verbs have around monkey around. Okay, uh, Ami, that was too easy. So now I'm going to make it hard. What's the difference between monkeying around yeah. and horsing around? Mm. <laughs> 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 What's the difference? Is there a difference? Is it a trick question? Uh, horsing. People who horse around has uh, has kind of a purpose for doing the actions, but monkey around doesn't mean any purpose. Uh, okay, well, uh, <laughs> to some degree, this is that is correct. 
horse around and monkey around. Um, okay, horse around. Basically, when the kids are doing flips by the pool, usually it's kind of dangerous. So they're doing very physical things, jumping on the bed um, or throwing a plate back and forth in the kitchen like it's a Frisbee. Stop horsing around. Monkey around is is more like um, if some if somebody okay if my eight year old kid takes apart the television set and is actually removing all the parts and he has fourteen different parts of the television set. Oh my God! What are you doing monkeying around with the TV? Are you crazy? I hope you know how to put that back. You monkey around with something. It, it, rather than being more physical, jumping around, leaping around the room, like horsing around, monkeying around is actually more like you're kind of working on one thing and you don't know what you're doing with it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. It, it can mean... Uh, it can mean that uh, you're you're wasting time. Well, it goes hand in hand with the idea you don't know what you're doing or you're wasting time. So we we can use it. Stop monkeying around. Let's get to work. Okay, mm. we can use it like that. Like you're not really doing anything or you're doing nothing important. So there's a couple different meanings, but yeah, okay. Well, there's another one. Uh, monkey business. Uh, okay. Well, all right. <laughs> monkey business. I think this. I guess this is, would be a compound noun, or an idiom. I'm not sure, or, or both. What is monkey business? <laughs> You're up to some kind of monkey business, aren't you? Uh, monkey business. Uh, uh, frequently illegal. Yeah, Nadir. Great. Monkey business. Frequently illegal, or something you really just shouldn't be doing. <laughs> Stop getting into some kind of mischief. It's not necessarily, yeah, monkey business could be cooking the books. That's a good example. Um, it, it, it could be, you know, when somebody's monkeying around, your your kids are doing something. They're playing in the cupboard, so they've moved all the glasses out of the cupboard, and they're they're balancing forks on with spoons and glasses on top of the forks and oh my god what is this monkey business stop monkeying around with the plates and the dishes okay they're, they're something like that something definitely bad <laughs> not good it's very negative that's for sure often illegal but doesn't have to be illegal okay Anna you got any other monkey business for us <laughs> no. Okay. Victor, can you think of any... Uh, okay, uh, a monkey in my back. Very good. All right. Uh, you have a big problem. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, a monkey on my back or a monkey on his back, whatever. Um, yeah, you have a big problem. It can be used for generally a big problem. Quite frequently, it is used to express the idea that somebody has an addiction. All right? Uh, it's very often used specific, more specifically to talk about an addiction. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a monkey on his back. He's got to check into rehab. He's had the monkey on his back for years. Like that. Make a monkey out of somebody. There you go, Anna. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I think that would qualify as another idiom. Make a monkey. What does that mean, Anna, if you make a monkey out of somebody? To make a fool out of somebody. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Exactly. Exactly correct. Make a fool of somebody. All right. Uh... Okay. Okay. Here's a more one that might be a little more challenging. A frog. Can you think of any uh, any verbs or uh, idioms that use frog that 
Okay. Does anybody know this one? Leapfrog. You know what this means? Anybody? To leapfrog? No. 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 Uh, no. I, I need I need an assistant with me here in the room so that we can we can demonstrate. Okay, uh, midair is on the right track, but you're jumping ahead of things. There is actually a physical meaning for leapfrog. Um, I don't know how to demonstrate it. Okay, hang on. Let me let me attempt. I can't really do it without. But okay, <coughs> one person standing up. One person bends down like this. Okay, and the next person puts their hand on that person's shoulders and jumps over them and then you jump over that person it's actually a physical thing it's like a game that kids play like skipping or hopscotch play leapfrog they jump over each other one jumps over the next jumps over the next uh, like a game yeah but of course it also has the <laughs> really it also has the more abstract meaning if you extrapolate that meaning you get ahead of someone right you achieve but usually the idea is you achieve or you have a success over the back of someone else he Bob Bob here's Bob Bob leapfrogged Paul here's Paul Bob leapfrogged Paul for the promotion Paul was supposed to get the promotion but Bob Bob is dating the boss's daughter, so he leapfrogged Paul for the promotion. If you get my drift. Okay, he jumped right over his back. Uh, yeah. Uh, kind of elbowed his way. The idea is that he went ahead of the line. Um, he was not first in line. He was the underdog. Okay. And he leapfrogged the favorite to, to get the promotion. The idea is that he jumped him in progression is the concept. Uh, okay. Anybody got any other frog meanings? I uh, see, uh, in, in a movie, uh, a girl say to other girl, and yeah. frog face, frog face. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Another adjective. It was an right. offensive word. Frog faced. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is to describe somebody that that looks like a frog. Okay. Again, notice uh, frog faced. <laughs> All right. Horse faced. Okay. Yeah, we do this a lot with animals. Okay, and I'm going to, I was waiting for that one as well. Um, all right. What does it mean, Anna, if you have a frog in your, fro uh, have a, f uh, a frog in your throat? Anna, Anna, what does it mean? <laughs> Anna, are you there? Anna, okay. Did I lose you? Where'd you go? Uh, okay. Uh, if you've got a frog in your throat, that means you, you're probably sick, and you have a scratchy throat. So when you talk, you talk like this. Okay. You can't really talk very well. Uh, I'll give you one more, Ami. I mean, what does it mean when I tell you I'm giving you advice and I tell you you have to kiss a lot of frogs? <laughs> What's the part that's missing? What? You have to kiss a lot of frogs. <laughs> Before what? Um, I don't think of... <laughs> you can't think of anything? Victor, you know? Yes, in the Disney movies, kids, uh, girls kiss a lot of frogs before they find a princess. A princess. There, you, 
a prince. A yeah. Prince. Thank you. Okay, there you go. You have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. Good advice for all you young ladies. Sorry. <laughs> a lot of frogs out there. <laughs> Rub it. Okay. Uh, all right. That was quite interesting, actually, or was interesting for me. I even learned a couple words. So thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate your help. I uh, couldn't have done it without you. Um, but my time is up, unfortunately. So bye-bye. See you guys next time here on Verbally. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.